Hey, what's going on guys? In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at one of the biggest time-saving tools a drywaller can have, the cutout tool. So long gone are the days of having to uh, measure out every plug and light, trace it onto your drywall, pre-cut it with a drywall saw. Almost every crew out there now is using routers, if not cordless, corded. But um, in this video, I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks and some uh, just let you know how a, how a cutout tool really works. So let's start off by talking about the type of uh, bits we like to use in our routers. Uh, we prefer the RotoZip bits. Uh, the ones we use for around plugs, lights, uh, air vents are the X bits, the uh, 530 second guide point X bit. That's our go-to. And uh, if we get closer here, this is what the bit looks like. So it's fairly big, it goes really quick around boxes and plugs, and it has this guide point. And what that does is this rides around the metal or plastic, and it doesn't cut in because it's smooth on the end. So that helps you go around the plug in the box, and then the blade a little further down is what cuts your drywall. So where we use that is for our plugs or boxes. Uh, we use it for our lights on the ceiling. And in this case, we also used it for around the air vent here. For our windows and doors, we like to use the Roto-Zip quarter inch uh, drywall window and door bit. And as you can see here, it's quite a bit bigger than the uh, 532 bit. Guide point as well, usually when you're going on windows and doors, it's wood or plastic, vinyl, you don't want to dig into that and wreck it. So the guide point allows you same thing, to ride around the frame or the window without cutting it, and you go really quick with the quarter inch bit. So before I show you the router in action, I want to go around and show you how we mark out our plugs and boxes. So generally speaking, the electricians, when they install all the lower plugs, they keep them all at the same height. So in this house, we know that the center is going to be at about 13 and a half. And what we would do if we came into this room is hold our pencil or marker up to the side of the stud it's mounted on, draw a straight line, and then do a little X. So we know the box is on this side of the stud. So when the drywall goes up, we know at 13 and a half, straight up from that X, there's gonna be a, a box there. So for another example, on a wall like this, there was nothing in the top sheet to be measured. So the top sheet goes on, but then down below, there's a few things we need to measure out. So starting with the uh, dryer, the dryer plug, I would put a line on the side here, maybe one here to show that it's a little bit bigger. Seven is our center. Draw a seven. We've got the attachments for the, the uh, washing machine. Same thing, draw two lines. We know center is gonna be seven, same thing, seven. And then we have a plug at the bottom. So I'm gonna check to make sure it's the same. Yep, 13 and a half. Draw a line on the side of the stud and put an X. Now that's all marked out. So when the drywall goes up, we know where everything is. So that basically in a nutshell is how we measure out all of the plugs and boxes. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up was with, with the plugs, most electricians nowadays know drywallers are gonna use routers and a lot of them don't like it. <laughs> but that being said, a lot of electricians nowadays, they push their wires back before we come. They expect we're gonna be using them. But say a wire is out a little bit like this, you see it, just take the two seconds, shove it in a little bit deeper and take note of that when you go to poke in your router. Just aim for somewhere you know the wires aren't gonna be, poke in here, hit the side, and go around. That way it keeps everybody happy, it doesn't take any time at all, and uh, yeah, you're not gonna be a jerk. <laughs> so maybe watching the video up to this point, you may have noticed that uh, our routers, we haven't had the depth gauge installed. This particular brand makes it pretty easy. It's a nice one, it just clicks, locks in where it needs to be. But we find the more you use it, the better you get. Uh, we, we just personally don't like having them on. I recommend if you're new, leave it on, it does help. But um, in certain situations too, I wanna point out, this particular smoke detector was installed really high up. So even with the depth gauge on, we wouldn't have been able to cut that out. So practice, get good with the depth gauge, but uh, as you get better, you'll find you don't really need it. So we've gone ahead and installed this sheet of drywall here on the bottom. Uh, and one thing I wanted to point out too, to keep in mind, when you're installing drywall, and there was a lot going on in this sheet. There's plugs, boxes, a lot to cut out. So if you were to put a screw right here, when there's something to cut out right here, it would end up busting the drywall because there's too much pressure. So you can see on this sheet, we've, we tacked it on either corner and even on this side, because there's a plug right here, just didn't even sink the screws fully, just enough to hold the sheet in place until we cut everything out. And this will make it so the drywall doesn't get all busted up. 
So the last thing I want to talk about in this video is the direction of cutting. There is a right and a wrong way of cutting uh, around plugs and in uh, windows and door frames. So if you're cutting on the outside of something, because of the direction the, the blade spins on the router, I've drawn a clock here, you go counterclockwise. So for this one, I would poke in, and just personal preference, I always go to the right. I find the edge of the box and then poke in, and then go around counterclockwise. It'll just hug the box, it won't dig in, and it makes it so you won't screw up. On a door frame, it's the opposite. You, you're Because you're cutting out the inside on this particular door. So you poke in here, and you go on the inside of the frame, which would be clockwise. And then that way, the blade doesn't go running off wild, and uh, you get a nice clean cut every time. Some professionals, like the more you do it, you probably could go both ways, but it's just easier to follow those steps. All right, so after following all those steps, we're ready to use the router. So let's go ahead and cut out this plug.